Section 10.2 to 10.3, arc length, sector area, and segment of a circle. Students will distinguish between arc measure and arc length and use a formula to solve for arc length in degree measures. So first, let's review what the formula for the area of a circle is. It is pi times the radius squared. And don't forget to label the area in square units after we find area. The formula for circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So we're going to talk about arc measure versus arc length. Arc measure comes from the measure of the central angle associated with that arc. This measure is in degrees. Now arc length is a portion of the circumference, um, 2 pi r of a circle. And we measure this in feet, inches, or meters. So we need to know that arc measure is in degrees and arc length is in feet, inches, meters, or something like that. So it's different. The way we find the arc length is we take the arc degrees, we times it by 2 pi r, and divide by 360. Let's say I asked you, we had a circle right here. And I had an angle of 90 degrees. What portion of the circle is would that arc length be? And we can look at it and say that it would be one-fourth of the circumference. Another way we can look at that is to say 90 divided by 360. And that's also equivalent to one-fourth. So that's why this formula right here makes sense, where we take the arc degrees times by, or divide by 360, that gives us the fraction of the circle that we're talking about, and then we're going to times that by the full circumference, 2 pi r. So in essence, like over here in this example, we'd be taking one-fourth of the whole circumference, 2 pi r. So that's why that um, formula makes sense, and that's where it's derived. So notice the difference between arc measure and arc length. Let's look here. Given circle P, find the indicated measures. So we're going to find the measure of the arc length of A, B, C. That would be from here all the way to C. So if this is 90 and this is 135, this little measure right here is a linear pair so it would be 180 minus 135, and that gives me 45. So this arc length from here to here would be 90 plus 45, which would be 135. Okay, B says the measure of BC. So this one right here. Well, since the central angle is 45, the arc length of BC is also 45. C says the measure of AD. So now that is this length right here. And the central angle that corresponds with it is this one. And since this is 90 degrees right here and it lies on the same line, this is also 90 degrees. So the measure of arc length AD would be 90 degrees. So the last one says the length of CD. Now this is different. The length of CD is not the arc measure. It is the arc length. So if we look here, CD is this one. The arc measure would be 135, but that's not what we're looking for. But if I use my formula up here, I take the arc degrees, so right here, arc degrees would be 135. I divide that by 360 and then times that by 2 pi times the radius. It tells me the radius here is 5. 2 pi times 5. And when I do that on my calculator I get 11.78. Now this is in centimeters, so we would write centimeters right there. And all I did was just plug this in my calculator. I put this in parentheses, just like that, and I put two times two pi times five, or you could do times ten pi. 
Okay, example one, find the length of AB. So here's the keyword length. It's even underlined in the notes. So I'm take the measure of 40 degrees, divide by 360, and I'm going to times that by 2 pi times the radius, and the radius is 8. So 2 times 8 would be 16 pi. I put that in my calculator, and I get 5 point five nine centimeters. Okay, number two. This is the same thing, but this time I have a radius or a diameter instead of a radius. So I'm going to make a little note here that my radius is nine. It's half of the diameter. So I take eighty divided by three sixty, because eighty is my angle, my arc measure here. And so it's 80 out of 360. That's the portion I'm trying to find. And then I times that by 2 pi r, which would be 18 pi. Should be a times right there. Okay, and then I get, when I use, I get 12.57 inches. Okay, number three is just like one and two, only my arc measure here is given right here instead of in the middle, but it's the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and skip number three in the notes. Four is a story problem. If the measure of arc AB equals 45 and the radius is 12, what is the arc length? Write your answer in terms of pi. So this time I'm not going to multiply out pi, I'm going to leave pi in the equation. So if my arc measure is 45, I'm going to take 45 out of 360 and times that by 2 pi times 12. So this equals, if I reduce this fraction down, I can divide the top and the bottom. I know, first of all, I can divide them both by 5. So let's do that first. And I get 9 over, and then 360 divided by 5 gives me 72. And I can reduce that one more time and divide both of those by 9, and I can get 1 8. So 45 out of 360 is the same as 1 8. Now I'm going to times that by 2 times 12 is 24 pi. So this is just like a fraction, 24 over 1, 24 pi over 1. So if I multiply across the top, I get 24 pi. And if I multiply straight across the bottom, I get 8. Now we're going to treat pi just like it's an x when we reduce here. So I'm going to take 24 divided by 8 and I get 3 and pi is still there. So 3 pi. That's how we would leave my answer in terms of pi. We'll do one more like that. Uh, number 5. If the measure of arc ij is 80 and the diameter is 10, what is the length, arc length of ij? So I'm going to take 80 out of 360. I'm going to times that by 2 pi. Now this is diameter and I need radius so it's going to be 5. Okay, so 80 out of 360 I can divide the top and bottom both by let's first try 4. Might be a good one to start with. And so if I divide both by 4 I get 80. Divide that by 4 and I get 20. If I divide 360 by 4, I get 90. Now I can divide both the top and bottom by 10, and I end up with 2 ninths. I know there's uh, easier ways to simplify, but that's kind of how I can do it quickly in my head. And then I'm going to times this by 10 pi. I take 2 times 5. I'm leaving pi. I'm not multiplying it out. I'm going to leave it like that. So it's like saying 10 pi over 1. So 2 times 10 pi is 20 pi over 9 times 1. And that is as far as I can reduce that, so I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay, now number 6 is a little bit of a challenging problem. So it says the circumference is 81.2 inches. What is the radius? So we have to think. We have 2 pi r that is for radius, and when I multiply that out, I'm supposed to get 81.2. So I need to find r. 
So what I can do is just divide both sides by 2 pi. Because remember, pi is just a number. So I can divide both sides by 2 pi, and I get the radius equals, I take 81.2, and I divide it by 2 pi. The instructions don't say to leave the answer in terms of pi, so we're just going to divide it out and write it as a decimal. We get 12.92 inches would be my radius. Okay, number seven says find the perimeter of the figure. Well, here I have a half circle, and I know a radius. So I can find half of the circumference right here by saying, I know the full circumference is 2 pi r. So half of the circumference would be half of 2 pi r, which would just be pi r. So that would be 6 pi. I can multiply that out if I want, which would be 6 times pi, and I get 18.85 centimeters. Now that's this part. Now I need to find the perimeter of this part. So I have 12. This side is going to be 12 if this is 6 right here because um, the full length across would have to be 12. 12 plus 12 plus 12. So that gives me plus 36 centimeters. And then that gives me 54.85 centimeters. Okay, section 10.3 is sector area. So this part of the notes is exactly the same as finding the length of an arc, but this time we're trying to find area. So we're trying to find this whole, if I had to find the area right here, be like that. Okay, now remember when I showed you the circle and I said if I had a 90 degree angle right here, what would be this arc length? And you knew that it was one-fourth of the full circumference. So what about area? If I just had to find the area of this, it would be one-fourth of the circle. 90 out of 360 is the same as one-fourth. So I can take this angle measure right here and put it over the entire circle, it measures 360, and then I can times that by pi r squared to get the area of just that little piece. Okay, so number one says find the exact area in terms of pi of the shaded sector. So on this one, I'm just going to take, look at my formula right up here. I'm going to take 130 degrees, because that's my angle measure, out of 360, and I'm going to times that by pi times the radius squared, which would be 9 squared, which would be 81. I'm going to do that on my calculator. I'll pause the video and do that quickly. Okay, I'll show you my work here. So I reduced this fraction down to 13 out of 36, and then I times it by 81 pi, which gave me 1,053 over 36. should put a pi right there. And I'm just using that fancy button on my calculator. I just plugged that in, and then I pushed fraction. Um, those of you that don't know where that's at, if I take 1,053 divided by 36, and if I want 29.25 to be left as a fraction, I'm going to go math button, sorry I should show you where that's at, it's right here, this math button, and my first option says fraction, so I'm going to push enter, and then it's going to take my answer right there and make it a fraction, and I get 117 over 4. So when we're trying to do pi, we want to write it like that. We don't want to put a decimal and then times pi. We want to have it as an exact answer, so we're going to use a fraction. 117 pi divided by 4. Okay, problem number two. My arc measure is 50, which means my central angle is 50. So I take 50 divided by 360, and I'm going to times that by pi times 12 squared, which is 144, because that's my radius squared. So if I use my little, I'll show you this time on the calculator, if I go 50 divided by 360, and I want to make that number right there into a fraction, I'm just going to use this math button 
push enter and it's going to be make my answer a fraction and it's going to be 536 so that's a quick way we could have also realized quickly that we could divide both by 10 but 5 out of 36 is as far as that will reduce down then I'm going to times that by 144 pi and this is like 144 pi over 1 if we think of it that way so I'm going to take 5 times 144 and I get 720 pi on the top and on the bottom I get 36 okay and I recognize um, how to reduce that quickly um, but we can also go 720 divided by 36 and I get 20 so this equals 20 pi when I reduce that fraction down Okay, number three says, if the radius of the circle is 9 centimeters, what is the area of the sector o, OAB? Okay, so it tells me the radius is 9 here. This is my central angle. So number three is not any different than any of the other ones we've been doing. So I'll show you how to set it up. We take 120 out of 360 and times that by pi times 9 squared, which would be 81. Okay, and... Now you know how to simplify that the rest of the way. So I'll let you go ahead and do that part on your own. Number four. This is just another story problem, but it says if the diameter of the circle is 30 inches, so if the diameter all the way across here is 30, then this little radius is going to be 15. So the way we'd set this up is 30 out of 360 times 15 squared times pi. That's pi r squared. Okay, and 15 squared is 225. So we can go 30 out of 360 times 225 pi and then reduce that down as well using your calculator. Probably be the quickest, easiest way um, unless you can re recognize the quick reduction here. Um, but I'll let you go ahead and finish that problem as well. Okay, I filled in a couple things for number five. This is an equilateral triangle. It says AC is 10. So equilateral means that BC also has to be 10 and AB has to be 10. All sides are equal. Another characteristic is that all angles are equal. So they all have to be 60 degrees. So it says calculate the area of sector ACB. So first, we're going to not worry about that triangle. We're going to calculate the entire area of the sector. And so I'm going to say 60 out of 360 times, my radius is 10, pi. Sorry, pi r squared. So 60 out of 360 gives me 1 6 times 100 so it's going to be 100 out of 360 pi we're going to reduce that down one more time and I'm just going to show you guys how to do this on the calculator again in case you forgot so I'm take 100 divided by 360 use this math button turn it back into a fraction and I get 5 18 so this would be 5 18 pi. Now for the sake of this problem, it's going to be a little bit easier to have this be as a decimal. So the area would be, I just did it quickly, would be 0.87 if I were to multiply that out of that little sector. Um, I'm going to use a few more decimal places just so it's more exact. So 0.87 to Six, six. Let's go. B says the height of triangle ABC is approximately 8.66 inches. So calculate the area. One half base times height is how we do the area of a triangle. So I have one half. The base is 10. 
The height is 8.66. So we're going to calculate that out. That's 5 times 8.66. I'll put that in my calculator. And I get 43.3 inches. For some reason, this one doesn't seem right to me. Maybe someone can see if I made a mistake. Maybe I'll pause the video and see if I made a mistake here. Okay, I found it. When I reduced this down to 1 6, 60 out of 360 should have reduced down to 1 6. I'll write it out here. And then I times that by 100 pi. So I forgot to change my denominator to 6. Math teachers make mistakes too, but the way I recognize it is I knew that this area should have been bigger than that one. So when I saw that, I should have realized I made a mistake. So that being said, I would have 100 pi divided by 6. So let's just kind of cross this out. And let's go 100 pi divided by 6, and I get 52.36. 52.36 inches. Okay, so C says calculate the area of segment AB of circle C. So if we look back up here at this picture, it says what's this little area? Well, I found the area of the whole thing, and I found the area of the triangle, so I can just subtract them. I'm going to take 52.36, and I'm going to subtract 43.3, from that, and we're just going to use the calculator here, 53.36 minus 43.3, we get 10.06. That would be in inches. Okay, we're going to have to make a part two to these notes, um, so I will finish the rest of these in part two.